Good afternoon. Um, thanks for having me, for asking me to come and talk on um, a special subject, hand hygiene. Um, uh, I guess this is difficult, it's a challenge being an infection control uh, professional, as you would all appreciate. Um, and what I found also challenging was to try to fit this subject into about 10 minutes. So if I start to accelerate madly, it's because I'm probably running out of time and I've still got some slides to do. Uh, I was told rule of thumb was uh, a minute a slide. I've got 26, so some of them are pictures though. Okay, so um, Central Coast Local Health District is uh, uh, an area between Newcastle in the north and Sydney in the south. We are um, a wonderful area if you've been there, um, lovely place to visit, um, but it's different to Newcastle and it's different to Sydney. We do things kind of different on the coast. Um, we've been told that many times. Um, what I want to talk to you today about is a bit about the background, some of the case for change and some of the results and where we're going from, from there on. So it's a busy slide but it basically is a bit of a short history of what we've done on the Central Coast and many of you would probably have been through the same phases. Um, we used to have the Clean Hands Save Lives program um, back in 2006-2007. It's a bit of a um, well, it didn't work very well. In late 2009, the National Hand Hygiene Initiative um, was being launched with the five moments of hand hygiene. We started our training of the gold standard um, auditors. We were married at the time with Northern Sydney and we were Northern Sydney Central Coast. Um, in 2010, we then commenced audit, uh, training all our second tier auditors. In February 2010, we did the official launch, a bit of a hoo-ha, and we concentrated on the education program for our healthcare workers, and then we looked at increasing our availability of the ABHR. Um, we used the methodology that was initially rolled out with the initiative, and we decided on 14 wards, and they were chosen because um, they were high risk areas and they were also chosen because they had some poor compliance from previous auditing. Um, all in all there were 14 wards over a district that has four sites, two um, large hospitals, Wyong and Gosford, and two smaller sites with Long Jetty and Woi Woi. 14 wards um, was enough to take on at the time and we'll work you through that. So we did our first audit, period one, in 2010 and it wasn't very good. Um, <laughs> and I look back now and when I was putting this to presentation together, <laughs> I kind of then remembered how bad it was. And um, this was quite a shock to our organisation um, that we could be so poor um, and we had a long way to go. Uh, as I said, we do things slightly different on the Central Coast or affectionately known as the Seni Coast. Um, the five moments for hand hygiene was quite a concept for many people to understand and we tried to engage our organisation. Uh, we made cookies. We did put them into individual wrapped kind of um, containers. Um, but we're up late, late at night um, baking, basically. And we, in, we, I don't know if anyone remember the jelly bars. It was very popular. Um, it was crystal in a bag. It added water and it became this sort of mushy jelly stuff. We put gambling chips into the pool. Um, they had moments written on them, one, two, five. And you were encouraged to do hand hygiene, put your gloves on, delve into the jelly bath and pull out a number. And we would discuss that number and what it meant. A little bit different. Um, anyway, moving on. So over time, we realised that we weren't really getting there. We were constantly below the um, national average and that was not pleasing for my um, organisation, particularly the people above and above that. So it uh, made us very sad. So what were the issues and the problems? Inadequate numbers of hand hygiene auditors. Um, there was a reduced rollout of the program. As I said, we had 14 wards. Um, we continually failed to reach the target moments. Um, and we had consistently low hand hygiene compliance since 2011. The hand hygiene compliance was below the state average, which is now 80, but it was below that anyway. Um, the cost of training and maintaining our auditor credentials was a huge challenge for us. Um, we had also inadequate electronic data collections. 
and what we thought was a good idea at the time just became another um, major impost to the infection control and what was the auditors, we agreed that they would go out with their paper versions and they would tick off all the hand hygiene auditors and send them back to us and uh, my colleague and I would sit side by side, it's very embarrassing, but we would sit side by side on the computer. I'd read them out off the sheet and she was faster on the computer than me, so she would type them all in. Um, and that we, we did actually time that a sheet of 27 moments could took about uh, seven minutes to get through to enter it in. So not only did the auditor take the audits, send them to us, and then the two people were entering them in. It's pretty ridiculous, very embarrassing. So we decided that we needed a case for change, and pretty much I had a dream. Um, and that dream was that we would um, have a dedicated team of hand hygiene auditors. And what I mean by that is not dedicated 219 that we'd already trained, but two people, if we could get the funding, to be our hand hygiene auditors. Um, that was a big ask for our organisation and our exec. Um, but we wrote the business case. We suggested that they would be highly trained and, and certainly we wanted to get them up to the, cold, the gold standard. And they would be managed internally by our unit. We would also increase the uh, areas that we were going to audit as opposed to the 14 wards that were just kept getting hammered. Um, and support some of those hand hygiene strategies for improvement and that was looking at the ABHR accessibility, the education, the results feedback, which is a biggie, and also the target of, of the moments that we needed to achieve. So say goodbye to the old way and on to the new way. And these are our two hand hygiene auditors. Um, we did recruitment, we made up PDs for them, and um, we successfully advertised and recruited, and we had them up and running by May 2017. <coughs> Handsome. Um, which, yeah, we launched it and suddenly, I don't know what happened, you know, it was uh, a little bit of a concern but, you know, we were doing poorly before and then suddenly with our two highly trained auditors um, and that grey column um, behind that is actually the moments that we achieved. We increased our moments as well and we started going across all our areas trying to do a whole of organisational approach. Um, and we kind of hit that. And that was 59.8. Um, and there was a, a few questions asked about it. Um, so we had to focus a bit. Um, I was very lucky to have um, a new line manager, a new boss come into the fray. And she's a very dynamic person. Um, and we worked on a hand hygiene improvement plan. That was July 2017. It seems like a long time ago. It's not that long ago. And it's been a lot of work. But we wanted to focus on some key areas. And I've heard a lot of today's talk about not just doing the data, 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 more data. Well, Central Coast was completely hung up on getting the data. Um, not, and what was frustrating us as a team was not doing anything with the data. It was more obsession with getting that data, getting enough of it, and getting it in there. And whew, made it and moving on to the next period where we can get more data, more data. So it was really problematic and we were frustrated because we still weren't achieving good compliance and we weren't focusing on the areas that we needed to improve our compliance. Sorry, I'll go back. So those focus areas, the culture and leadership was so important, the knowledge, the skills, the equipment and the environment and the monitoring data and performance feedback these were the four key areas and a massive plan <laughs> was developed and uh, my manager Kylie Downs, I don't know if anybody knows her, she is the most dynamic woman I've ever had as a manager and I think that inspired our team as well. We were downtrodden, we were really seriously down and out. Um, we knew we needed to get all these things right and we're working on it. So the culture and leadership, well, there's a lot of things I had to try and contain down. I think there was a rule of thumb of how many points to put on a slide. Um, I think I've gone over a few times and the size of the font was a little bit smaller than it should be, so I hope you can all see these. I wanted to put the pictorial um, evidence up there because we're a very creative mob 
Um, we have lots of great ideas. Um, some of them don't always come off, but as with the jelly bath, it was a bit, bit of fun. Um, so what we tried to do is put hand hygiene up into everybody's face, basically. Um, the standing agenda item, well, yep, tick. We've uh, created a message of clean your hands every patient every time. We rolled that across the uh, LHD. We worked on our own local uniform policy and we broached the subject of bare below the elbows initiative. Not always well received. Um, hand hygiene and auditors will address the non-compliance at the time of the audit, which is excellent because the 219 other auditors that we trained really had no skill and were not comfortable in doing that. Um, and these were two enrolled nurses, keep in mind. Um, positive reinforcement was um, more bees with honey. Um, we have had a trophy that's grown over time um, that we award to all the, the best area and we get that competitive spirit going. And certificates that are sent out constantly to people who show you know, promise or they've you know, shown initiative and, and you know, great, great behaviour. We weekly send reports to our executive leadership team so that they can keep up to date and so they can have a go at the people that maybe need to have a go at. Um, and we also publish all the results on our intranet and we have the patient journey board, a constant banner going across the screen and every ward has the electronic patient journey board. Other areas that we worked on were the signage and we used our speed dials, we created new sort of um, our barometers in the entry to the facilities. We engage the hand hygiene companies who we're spending a lot of money with to come on board and help us through this. Um, we use some of the, the lead the way posters to get our key clinicians commitment. Um, our JMO quality team um, have formed and um, they've taken on some initiatives as well and, and have their own sort of activities that we link up with. Um, we've also looked at other healthcare worker groups that felt, you know, that they couldn't really um, understand the five moments, couldn't really get a handle on it, so allied health particularly, so we've tried to work with them um, and devise some tools that they can use and how they can show their results. Knowledge and skills, well, we focused on the mandatory training and making managers um, responsible for that. Um, looking at the hand hygiene glove use, the hand care particularly, we're going to increase their hand hygiene, we're going to have to look after their hand care, so we're very particular about our products. Our IPAC promotions and infection prevention week and the World Hand Hygiene Day, we did a lot of work around those, devising some flyers and education videos and using our website where we monitor our hit counter as well. Um, we did some specialised education for our medical imaging, renal dialysis and sterilising services. And we also educate at all our orientations for all healthcare workers. We, get, it's, we hold market stalls, so it's a 60 to 7 people come to our stall and you can no longer give a lecture of half an hour of infection control to every person that joins your organisation. So our focus was hand hygiene and we just tried to demonstrate through the um, glow germ, the glitter bug stuff, on technique and how important and whether or not norovirus, norovirus is still on the end of their finger. <clears throat> uh, the equipment and environment, um, we're obsessed with the accessibility of ABHR, um, making it available. A lot of the feedback from talking to the staff to see what their barriers were, particularly the doctors, was that they didn't have easy access to it. So unfortunately I don't think we're work health and safety's friend at the moment and I think if we went around and counted the litres that are out in our wards at the moment it might be a little bit close to the limit but we're trying to promote that. Uh, the bracket installation, there's a hell of a lot of equipment out there from high-low beds to the bariatric beds to the medication trolleys to the things that are in a unit as you would know is incredible and trying to get one bracket that fits all that is impossible. So we work with the companies and we um, try to standardise certain items um, and review all the product around the area. We're also on the um, New South Wales state review contract for the hand hygiene product. So ongoing, we don't want to forget about the patients because they don't often get their little bowl and a washer and 
before they eat meals anymore, so we looked at our individual wipes and how we could deliver that to them. Um, a lot of staff feel it was the patient's fault that you know, the infections get passed around, and it's not always so. Um, ongoing, the training for the environmental services about the replenishment of it. Um, we had a lot of feedback around people saying, oh, it'd be great, I'd do hand hygiene if it was there cursed. You know? uh, so we needed to make everybody responsible for it because there's always that, not my job, um, somebody else can fill that up. Doctors will say, you know, I'm too important for that. Um, so we were trying to train some of our group that would be around the wards to keep monitoring our um, ABHR and making sure that it was usable. The design of the posters, you know, we tried to get um, that one down the bottom is a standardised kind of thing. We had some desktop caddies designed as well with our uh, corporate kind of uh, signage on, attached to that. And then, of course, as I said, the work health and safety um, implications. We also looked at the storage in cars for community nursing. You know, how do we want them to do hand hygiene if they, you know, have it in their cars, you know, it gets to 40 degrees. Is that safe? How do we manage that? Um, and that's one of our auditors using the whiz bang thing called the computer tablet, which is better than the paper version. Um, and that meant that you know he could audit straight at the time and straight into the database, which was a far more efficient way of doing it. So we have two of those, one each for each auditor. Um, we also had an application designed called a click view application which helps us with our trending and Hand Hygiene Australia thankfully as soon as we've entered all and approved all our data I quickly sent off an email and say can we have it back and you know um, affectionately known as the data dump goes back to our um, business performance unit who then put it into a um, an application that enables our whole organisation, which not, probably like yours, is very complex. Everybody wants a different angle at it. Um, it's difficult for us to keep making up graphs and having these numerous big databases to produce a graph that looks like this whenever asked for that. So this one is a great tool. I'm happy to talk about it to anybody who's interested. It will enable and it does enable us to look at breaking down to the healthcare worker, to the ward, um, trending over time, right down to moments, and it's very specific. And our lovely hand hygiene auditors have um, taken up huddling with some of our staff. It's a very affectionate area, the district, the central coast. And after doing some hand hygiene, we have huddles, and many of you know huddles from other types of initiatives. Other things that we've done, a public display, I've already said. Um, we've designed up some new posters for our public on entry. We've looked at all the progress reports back to the departments in all areas every week. At the end of the week, the hand hygiene auditor will send back to the wards that he's audited um, that week uh, a report to keep them up to date. So if you're audited that week, you'll get a report. So instead of waiting for the end of the period and then getting all this data, it's a constant thing. Um, we also send out the certificates and we look at who's going to you know, win the trophy for the year, for the period, pardon me. Um, executive like to keep informed all the time, so we also on a Monday morning provide them with an update. Our reports, are huge. it's complex, it's so complex. We've stratified our healthcare workers down to the nth degree. Our allied health is somewhere between 16, 18 types of people from it's not just allied health, it's now physio, it's occupational therapists, it's nutritionists, it's podiatrists. And then they have assistance in all those areas as well. So they want to know where they direct their efforts. So we've stratified that down and we're in the process of stratifying down our ambulance into patient transport and New South Wales Health, uh, New South Wales Ambulance, pardon me. To deliver all that information back, and the names of people change and their titles change. We developed this massive spreadsheet that basically says who's the divisional manager that looks after these groups, um, which num handles that ward, um, who looks after physio for the north, physio for the south. It, it, it's huge. <laughs> and I think our hand hygiene auditors had a couple more grey hairs this period. But we're trying to get it done and back to them the end result by the week. I suppose, of, of the end of the period. Okay. 
So that's the Click View app down the bottom. So that's some trending um, across our sites. Um, and you can just manipulate that. And that's our website, some of the resources that we have. So what are our results? Ooh. OK, so up and down, up and down, but the trend is up. So that's pleasing. There's been some milestones. We, we've had a huge redevelopment at Gosford Hospital, massive piece of work. And for whatever reason, after hours and hours of meeting with design people, um, they still didn't put up our hand rubs. And when they agreed to put them up, they're about up here somewhere. So we've had some real issues with that. We're still working through that. Um, one building, I think we placed 76 uh, cutan you know, foam pumps in specific areas in just one building. Um, we're still continuing the work on that one. The healthcare worker compliance, period two was when our auditors started, our dedicated auditors. Uh, it wasn't very really good. Uh, the period three, last period, uh, we've improved in most areas, par the domestics and our ambulance, unfortunately. But we've got some strategies to work on that. The five moments for uh, moments for compliance, well, it's improving. There still seems to be moment five, everybody's favourite, as you said. <laughs> um, we're, we're going to work on that one as well. Area to, the area is audited. You can see our um, constant 14 wards that got hammered. Then we jumped to 31 within that first period of our auditors starting. That was a huge improvement because we knew there's up to 52 areas that really hadn't been audited, had no idea what their hand hygiene was. And we were saying our hospital, Gosford Hospital, would take on three or four wards compliance and we'd say that ward would have that compliance. So whatever those four wards had, everybody else ended up. So it wasn't very good. Um, the improved moment targets, a lot of data. <laughs> and I think we did have a conversation with Hand Hygiene Australia about maybe too much data. But we were really um, off on a roll at the moment. Um, getting out to all those areas meant we did more data. We tried to stratify where we did it. Um, we've improved it. Now we're going down a little bit, sort of petering off a little bit to see where we can focus on. And I guess overall compliance, I know it's not up there, some of you are doing the 90s up, <laughs> but that's an improvement when you can see where we've come from. And we have our goals, you know, we're now trying to reach the 80, we're going to uh, stretch our goal to 85, so I think we're going up in increments. We're trying to be, it's trying to be achievable, I guess. Um, where we go from here, um, we're going to review our hand hygiene um, plan. A uh, massive document that we'll go back through and we go over it regularly. Our goal is now 85 for the next period. Um, we're going to focus on some of the healthcare worker uh, groups. And we're also looking at some of the low performing moments <coughs> in that um, pesky little moment five, um, which we are also rolling out a project around the cleaning of patient care equipment. So we'll hopefully that will work hand in hand. A bit of a pun. Um, expanded role of the what we now call IPAC facilitators because um, we've recently had um, approval and they've now become permanent in our department. So they're not going to just be a hand hygiene auditor. As in everything, everything in infection control relates back to hand hygiene. They'll have an expanded role, but their focus is still around the auditing as well. And roadmaps seem to be the trendy thing on the, I don't know if the New South Wales health is, or it's across the Australia, I don't know, but roadmaps seem to be popular at the moment. And that's looking at the savings. Um, and I understand that the savings that we've made on, dis, on the Central Coast recently, $1.1 million we've saved using algorithms. <laughs> that's our business performance unit have associated our increase in hand hygiene to dollars. Um, and our real-time hand hygiene auditor performance, we're creating a hand hygiene dashboard that at any time our execs or anybody can go on there and see what they're doing. Thank you.